Hello, my name is Colin Riddington and today I'm going to talk to you about a rather strange mystery that was brought to my attention by a forum user several years ago. And I've called it a deep hidden and complex access attachment mystery. And I do realise that the whole title is going to be extremely obscure and needs further explanation. I've written an article about it which you can find on my website isleofdogs.co.uk complex deep hide mystery and there is an example app the one I'm using in this uh, presentation and also there'll be a link to the PowerPoint that I'm just showing you here. Okay let's explain a few terms. First of all let's explain the problem that was brought to my attention. The user was trying to secure his databases. He was concerned that data was being mistreated, misused, and indeed being stolen. So he was trying to prevent that by making his databases more secure. And he found out about ways of deep hiding tables. He was also using attachment and multi-value fields. And to his dismay, to put it mildly, he found out that when he deep hid those tables, the ones with attachment or multi-value fields, the data was lost or rather appeared to be lost. Making the tables visible again didn't restore the data. He was by now beginning to panic. I found an unexpected solution. I found a way of recovering the data and also preventing future problems. Made him very pleased, but he also at that stage decided to do things a bit differently in the future. The mystery though was why did it work? I certainly wasn't expecting the solution and I'll show you the solution later, but your job will be, if you can, to try and explain it. So I need to explain a few more things before we can even do that though. First of all, we need to talk about different types of table and data types. Types of table, basically they can be local or they can be linked to another database. The tables can be visible in the navigation pane, they can be hidden, but you can show them by different means, and they can be system tables, normally hidden, but they can be made visible. You can also, however, have deep hidden tables. They do not appear in the navigation pane, no matter what you do. You can also have complex tables, each of which will have an attached table, which is deep hidden, to which you've got no access. I'll explain that again in a second. Standard data, data types then, short text, long text, number, auto number, currency, date time, yes, no fields. They're all standard data types, which you'll have no problem with. You can also have hyperlink, calculated fields, and OLAY object fields. Less, well, less commonly used and calculated fields should be used very, very rarely. If you can, use a query instead. Then you've got three types of complex data types that were introduced by Access in version 2007. They are attachment fields and multi-value fields, both of which are strongly discouraged by most serious developers. There are all sorts of problems with them, although they're very, very appealing to new database users. And the third type, the least well-known memo field version history, is less problematic, but also less used. So let's go a bit further now. This video is going to demonstrate the use of these complex data types, attachment fields, multi-value fields, and so on, what the advantages supposedly are and the disadvantages of each. How complex data types work? Basically, they use an attached table, one you've got no access to, one you can't even see. I'm going to show you ways of hiding and deep hiding tables. I'm going to show you the unexpected problem and the mystery about why the solution works. OK, time to look at the database. Now, in this database, I've got a small number of tables looks far more than you'd actually expect here. Most of those are system tables here. We've got four standard tables. There's no linked ones in this demo. And those four standard tables there, three of them are ones with complex data types and there's just one standard table here as well. I've got a whole load of extra tables though. And if I click on navigation options and then tick show system objects, a whole series of extra tables appear. And if we click on show hidden objects as well and we now see some system tables that are also hidden and you can now see a far larger number of tables here though far fewer than in my list here you won't see for example any of these first four the ones that are actually marked with a f underscore at the beginning they're all attached tables and they're all deep hidden 
You will also see one called TBL Table Types, which is one I've made, which is deep hidden. Here are all my system tables, some of which, again, you still can't see. M6 complex types, attachment, and so on. There's nine of those. You can't see any of those here. So we go down here. I don't actually need to look at the system tables, though, in this database, so I'm going to hide them. And bring this down now, and we can see there's still eight tables, of which, if I now come back and untick hidden and untick your system, you can see only four of those, the last four in fact on here. Now there are ways of hiding things from the navigation pane that don't do any problems, don't have any problems whatsoever. You can click hide in this group. It's gone and if I just refresh this table here, this form here, nothing has changed at all. Table settings is disappeared here. I can bring it back quite easily though if I now tick navigation options Tick show hidden objects, it's back again, and I can unhide it in this group. There's another way of hiding, it has a slightly different effect if I click on table properties and tick on hidden there. At the moment, the flags for the table settings is zero. Click OK, refresh that. It's now changed that to a hidden table with flags eight. There is a difference, you don't need to, to worry about what that is, it doesn't make the slightest difference though as far as access is concerned in terms of how this works. And again I can bring that back again and it now looks a perfectly normal table again and I can refresh this on here and it's back to zero again. Now I'll leave this open and we may look at that again later. You notice different flags for these three complex tables here, the deep hidden table and these attached deep hidden tables. The flags values tell Axis how those tables are meant to operate and the properties of each. Let's look at the main form. And the main form is going to look at each of these four tables that are here, a standard one and three with complex data, and I'm going to try and manipulate those. So the settings table all this has is some information about the app that I'm working on, the version, when I last updated it and so on. And that's the information I've got in the footer there, for example. I can show that in a form as well. Let's just drag that over here in a second. And I can now deep hide that. Now when I deep hide this, it will disappear from the navigation pane. Gone. Let's try showing hidden objects. Oh, I'm already showing them. It's still gone. Let's try showing hidden and system. Well, the system tables come back, but table settings is still disappeared. I can't actually see it. If I try and view it, Access now comes up with an error. It can't find the table. It's deep hidden. It knows where it is, but it's choosing not to make it visible to you deliberately. I can actually still though see this, just close that and reopen it just to show you that I can still show you that information. The form, because I made it while the table was still visible, the table hasn't changed in any way whatsoever. No problems about it at all. If I show that again, it reappears in this table here. I'm going to hide the system tables again. Back to four now. It's appeared in there again. It still looks normal. Everything's fine. So for any standard table, deep hiding has no adverse effects on the data. No problems occur, occur at all. Now let's take the next one. An attachment table is one with one or more attachment fields. Let's go to design view, attachment here. And this allows you to change this so you've actually got one or more items attached to each record. They can be any external file, but then doing this, you will store them within Access. I can show you that in a form as well. And if I click on Manage Attachments, I've got one zip file attached to that. Here, I've got a Word doc, and I've even got another database attached to here. Now, doing this is going to make the files much, much larger. larger. And the danger with this is, although it's a very easy way of actually 
cont holding data together, holding files together in one place, it makes your database get very large very rapidly. And if you're not careful, your database will soon become un unmanageable. So, if I close that, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to deep hide this table, and the table attached will disappear from there. Gone. Let's view it. Can't view it, of course. Can still view it. And it looks all right, but actually what's happened is the form hasn't yet refreshed. I'd have to close the database and reopen it to do that. Let's bring it back. It's appeared there. Let's view it. Oh dear, there is no data whatsoever in there. Clicking on there, there is nothing. I've lost the data. Let's try again with the multi-value field table now. Multi-value fields is where you have several bits of information in one record. And again, they cause all sorts of problems and serious developers advise against their use. Attractive again to new users because they can put several things together in one place very easily. But they can suffer exactly the same problem as I'm about to show you. So I'm now going to deep hide that table. When I deep hide that, then of course, try to view it. It can't. Let's make it visible again. And it's lost all the data or appears to have lost all the data. The data still appears in that form again because I haven't yet refreshed it. If I close and reopen the database, it would be gone as well. Now, what's really happened is that those two tables now, the attachment table and the MVF table, have become detached from what the attached table that is deep hidden and kept away from your prying eyes. So those attachment files and those MVF fields there, those are both no longer actually being recognized by my complex data table. Hmm, problem. Simple solution, don't use either of them, or if you're gonna use them, don't deep hide them. But that didn't help the person concerned. So he'd only tried those two. He didn't know about this third one, but I thought I'd try that one as well. So this looks like a standard memo field, and it is, except there's an extra twist. When you make a column history memo field, it's a long text field, it used to be called memo fields, but you change the append only property to yes. Badly named, what it actually does can be shown with the form here. So this was the first record, and you can see here then over a period of time I added different items to that. Let's go to the second record, and it's goodbye from him, but you can see again I changed that over a period of time. Not particularly meaningful with these examples here, third one there, fourth one. But if you were working in a database where you needed to add fairly lengthy comments over a period of time and update them, it's a way of you being able to look back to see what you had before. But again, it depends on one of these complex table, attached tables that are deep hidden to you with a very long and strange name. Now, when I deep hide that table, view the form. Well, the form's doing refreshing quickly, so let's go to here. Can't, sh can't see it, of course. Show it again. Come back on here, view it. This one still has the data. This one still has the version history. It works in a different way to the other two. Still complicated to manage, but it works in a different way. And that gave me an idea. If that one then doesn't lose its data, what happens if I add a column history memo field, I'll call it CHM. Long text, there, I'll put straight past there. I must change that to append only yes. Save it. And now let's view that table. And look, my attachment fields have actually been repopulated. Somehow adding that column history memo field has reattached the data. Okay, let's try the same on a multi-value table. So we've got the two fields here. And this one's empty. Now I'm going to design view. Add a column history memo field. Long text. Append only yes. Yes, I want to do that. 
let's look at it and exactly the same it's brought the data back I haven't actually done anything with this column history memo field I haven't populated it but it's recovered the lost data okay while well, we're there then so just to remind you we've got attachment field there but we've got added that extra field there the column history memo field let's deep hide it gone bring it back let's view it data is still there extra field added got the multi-value field data back deep hide it show it view it it's still there so as long as I keep that field there the data is still visible and available but I said as long as I keep it there let's go to this and delete it say no but it's already saved it so now we're just back to those two we've lost that data again we need to keep that field we can't actually take it out we need to actually keep that in place let's put it back once more call it anything I like really that's just to remind me why I've done that bring it back and back comes the data so I have shown you the problem I've shown you the uses of these three different types of complex data fields I've also explained the fact that they cause problems because they depend on a deep hidden attached table and the problem is that when you deep hide the complex table you become detached from that magically adding a column history memo field brings the data back again but why does it happen well, that's the bit I'm leaving for you to puzzle out. Let's come out of the database and go back to then my PowerPoint. And if we go to the next slide, just to remind you what I've shown you, that multi-valued and attachment field data appears to be lost when tables are deep hidden. In reality, the tables are becoming detached from the data stored in the deep hidden attached tables. But making those tables visible doesn't bring the data back. By pure chance I found out that adding a long text memo field with column history recovers the lost data or rather it seems to reattach the detached tables. Keeping the field there prevents the problem of recurring. You can deep hide to, to your heart's intent and the data stays there but just don't remove them again. The tables are still detached in reality. The mystery though and that's the bit I'm leaving for you to actually explain is why does the unexpected fix work? And I brought the issue to Microsoft's attention. They've acknowledged it. They've said that it's been a problem for a long time. And at some point that they will actually find a way of solving this for future use. But why does it work? That's the bit for you. And to help you, if you're interested in finding a solution, then have a look at these links and I will put the links in the YouTube video uh, along with the information here. The original thread that brought this to my attention that hiding tables deletes attachment fields dates back to about 2019 or so. An article about multi-value fields and why I'd really say don't use them at all and that was my recommendation to this user that just don't use attachment fields, don't use multi-value fields but if you must use them don't deep hide your tables, your choice. Related issues then with lookup fields in tables, also something that you should avoid using. An article on the column history fields, the one of these complex data types that I don't actually feel adversely about. It's still complicated, there is other ways of doing the same thing, but it's not so problematic. And finally, purpose of system tables. The all explaining what all the different system tables in Access do, how they work and so on. Now if you read all of those you'll be well on your way to find the explanation of this. So thanks for watching. If you found it interesting, puzzling or useful in any way at all, please add a like and leave a comment. Hopefully you found something there that you didn't know about. Subscribe, then you'll be notified whenever new videos are uploaded. The idea is I do about one a week or so. 
and please do suggest any topics you would like to see in future videos in this series. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again.